Well, hello there. Mark Risen Hopkins coming to you once again from South by Southwest 2011. I am here with Mark Phillip, the founder, yeah, founder, making sure I get the, the title right. I, I called someone a, a founder when they were a CEO earlier, and oh. that, that didn't work. The founder was over there, <laughs> got mad. So, founder of Are You Watching This? And uh, this is a, a website that alerts you when excitement happens in a sporting event. If I, if I encapsulated that right? I think you got it all. And don't worry about the, the title. It's a one-man shop. You can call me the janitor. You can call me whatever you want. Chief Bottle me. Washer. I'm familiar with that title. Yeah. Exactly. So basically, I've built a site that I've always wished existed. Mm -hmm. I hate more than anything missing great games, whether it's a, a no-hitter through eight and I was sleeping or a, a triple overtime game and I was doing laundry. Yeah. So I've built an engine that's able to figure out in real time if games are exciting and alert you to run to the couch. That that's uh, that sounds like a very necessary thing, very simple. But I, there's a lot of as you get into this, there's a lot of stuff going on, on the back end. There's a lot of stuff it, going on. on the finding out what's exciting for a human is pretty easy. How did you get a computer to do this? Well, a lot of it has been pretty tough, and there's almost this philosophical question of mm -hmm. if you have an NBA game that's tied with 30 seconds to go, and you have a WNBA game that's tied with 30 seconds to go, yeah. should the engine treat them the same because the followers? It's slightly different in scale. Right. So our objective is to have an engine that is completely cold, treats everyone the same. So we sort of layer in users as well. So you have this cold objective engine, and then you have these very passionate, by definition, subjective fans, and we blend those two together. So the opinion of the engine plus the opinions of the fans, when you roll it all together, you get the best signal of if a game's exciting or not. That's interesting. So, and uh, you're you're pulling in social signals as well as uh, stats and, and live stats in some cases or, or all cases. In all cases, in if all cases. the alert doesn't get sent out soon enough, then we've kind of lost the whole reason for sending it. Right, right. The worst thing I can do is send out an alert that is by the time the person gets to the couch, the game's already over. Right. At least they, they feel even worse that way because they missed a great game. So speed's very important, real time's important. We process on some days as many as 500 games, one in four days is over 100 sporting events. But our goal is to get an alert out. We run all of our calculations in under 100 milliseconds. So within a tenth of a second, we're able to figure out is this game good or not and get the alert to the person within 30 seconds. Generally, that's enough from the time we get an update to the time they can get to the couch that if there was a commercial break, they get to the couch, the game's starting right back up again. So, so tell me about, because uh, you've got a community that it's just a lot of crowdsourcing going on. Uh, what role does that play in, in, in how your, your operation works? There are super fans. You know, they're kind of like uh, the editors that you might see on Wikipedia. There are 0.0001% of fan that no matter what the sport is, they're going to watch it. If it's extra innings in, in Little League, they're going to run to the couch to watch it. So we're very focused on getting that super fan to help us curate the data. Mm -hmm. Because really, the, the main goal is to take this engine, take this community, and bring this data to the living room. That's our holy grail. If you're watching... Uh, Two and a half men, as <laughs> yeah. you might want to do these days. <laughs> yeah, uh, may, may, may have some problems with that now, but uh, yeah. In, in syndication, yeah. most likely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you get an alert that says, hey, there's a triple overtime game, two channels over, or like there was today, Northwestern is giving Ohio State a heck of a game. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to run to the couch right now. You sort of take it to the next level of, you're at South by Southwest all week. You can tell your DVR, I like the Longhorns, I like the Cowboys, and everything ACC basketball start recording anytime anything interesting happens. Sports is the most DVR resistant genre on TV to, to steal from Mark Cuban, and it's a complete troublemaker. All sports fans and all non-sports fans have dealt with the issues of trying to record something that sports either gets in the way of or runs long and you miss the end of a game. With our technology, we're able to marry TV listings and sports data to really solve that, that troublemaking genre of sports, whether it's extending a game when it runs long, pausing recording when there's a rain delay, or if you're recording something where it gets preempted by sports, we can automatically and proactively shift back the recording so you don't miss the end. Okay, so I want to talk about DVR integration because that's something that's really interesting to me. But before we do that, I want to talk about like your social signals because there's there's two aspects of that that's very interesting to me and probably our audience. Yeah. Is uh, First of all, you've got to be processing a massive amount of, of social stream data, which is, you know, really kind of the theme of the year is big data and how, how we how you manage that what tools you're using to to flume that in and uh, what tools you're using to analyze that because semantic is just as much uh, a part of and, and sentiment analysis is just as much a part of, of dealing with big data as housing it 
can be. Absolutely. So uh, let's talk a little bit about that first. What sure. what what's what are you doing with on the social signals side? It's we've been selective because there is so much data out there. You know, big picture wise, our goal is to whittle down information to curate. With so many games, so many channels, so many teams, so many leagues popping up every day, uh, we really want to whittle it down. So. We play with certain things. We look at Google Trends lightly. We look at Twitter lightly. The, the problem with streams like that sometimes uh, is that it's overweighted to the most popular teams. You're always going to see more tweets about the Yankees and the Cowboys and the San Francisco Giants because they're popular teams. So we dabble in those, but uh, understand that we want to be unbiased because our main goal is to make sure we have a very accurate engine. And the whole NBA versus WNBA thing. Exactly. So if you, if you wait, it's strictly there are problems. So we try to normalize it as much as possible, and we definitely pick out for certain cues, but we try not to rely on it completely. Uh, I think for any site, if you rely completely on users, completely on social streams, you're going to get just the popular teams. If you focus just on algorithms, you're going to get games that might seem good on paper, but you'll miss sort of the subtleties. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to, to mix those two to really, uh, the objective side is interesting because it's so structured and so metered. The social side is interesting because it's overwhelming. It's like trying to take a drink from a fire hose. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if you're able to get those two together in the right way with the right blend, that's generally when you do the best. Right. So you're basically, you, you, normalizing is an interesting approach to that. that that's that's a, a term I'm familiar with as, as someone that does audio engineering. Sure. Hadn't really thought about it as applied to, to social stream signal data. But so you, you normalize the streams and you apply, I guess, some sort of scoring Absolutely. to that and then compare that as an element of like the stats and other other elements that you're using in terms of, uh, of uh, excitingness factors in games. Trailing averages are, are huge for us. If you look at just the social streams, understanding that people are always talking about the Yankees, so things have to be relative. It's really important. Right. On the objective side, we use trailing averages also because the engine's actually able to learn and understand which games are going to be good before they actually even happen. It understands Yankees Red Sox, it understands Texas OU, Duke UNC, because it's able to look at the past games, understand what people have done previously, which games were exciting, and understand, okay, these teams always play good games, this game coming up in three weeks, you need to make sure you're in front of the TV. Right. Very interesting. So let's uh, let's go back to talk about the integration, because this, this is where it's all this is where it's all going, is, is uh, almost a divorced uh, experience from uh, the cable providers and the telco providers yet sports is probably one of the last hooks that keeps you in there Absolutely. you've got you've got uh, you know Xbox and ESPN doing that thing and yeah I guess it's what is it, ESPN 3 ESPN is what they call it, right. uh, it it's in some places obviously not a hundred percent coverage of all all the sports everybody's gonna watch but you see stuff starting to go that way and of course the the major providers are also enhancing the experiences through the DVRs what are you guys looking at uh, where do you see everything going and where are you focusing your efforts in terms of integration on these experiences? My big word is curation, you know, whittling down the noise. You have 2.5 million different combinations of zip and postal code, cable and satellite provider across the US and Canada. No site out there really does a good job of telling you, here's a great game, here's the channel number to turn to. It's that simple frustrating thing that we all deal with this yelling of, I can't find the game, someone tell me where it is. So the ability to whittle down these hundreds and hundreds of channels we get and tell you, here's what you should watch. Here are the top three things that matter to you. Mm -hmm. Click on one and we'll take you right to it. Right. We have a proof of concept Google TV app that's out right now that does exactly that. And it's the only app I've seen that actually changes the channel for you, that actually complements the content coming over the pipe. ESPN is a juggernaut. They get $4 plus a sub a month for everyone that has it. And they are the, the glue that is holding the cable together for a lot of people. So, uh, and we just came from the Samsung lounge where they're showing off these TVs with all this app integration. Uh, one of the most troubling things for me, because we do a lot of video, obviously, and uh, we're, we're trying to figure out the best distribution strategy on, as, a, as an independent producer, you know, we can't go straight to cable. You know, that, that, that's a big investment. You know, come up with a million dollar bucket of dollars, and you know, then then you're then you're good. But we got to go kind of more uh, it, the DVR approach, the Xbox approach, the mobile approach. Uh, but when we look at the the opportunities with apps on TVs, it's exciting at first until you see the fractured landscape of all these different app platforms. Yeah. 
you're obviously in that world too. So what are your, what are your thoughts on the fracturing of, of these app platforms? I think it's very similar to what we saw in mobile. Uh, I think there will be a similar land grab as well when these set-top boxes finally become robust enough to support these apps. It is something that we're going to have to deal with. I don't think there is going to be uh, this sort of HTML5 underlaying layer that we'll be able to develop to the way we did with our mobile apps. Right. I think they're always going to be fractured and it's something that's very frustrating. Do you see it living on the TV or do you see like players like PlayStation, Xbox, and, and like Boxy and Roku coming up underneath and supplanting any apps that may live on a TV? I think yes and yes, and then there's even the Comcast of the world. Uh, they are coming out with new set-top boxes later this year that are going to blow people away. There's yeah, I uh, 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 can't remember his name. A uh, guy came from Plaxo, uh, runs social... Uh, ah, I, Mike Berkeley maybe? Ryan King? No, no, I, I'm going to look like an idiot because he's going to watch this, <laughs> sure. and I've got a mental block on his name. But uh, anyway, he was talking, when, you know, they brought in Plaxo for that very reason, right. so they could run social signals as a part of the set-top boxes. So as Dev, Comcast like, likes to get, public likes to beat up on them, sometimes for good reason. Sometimes. Uh, but uh, in terms of being social savvy, I think they probably got a better handle on it than most of the uh, cable co-telco providers. Absolutely. Their, their social technology group is very sharp. And I think they're really going to lead the way for the next generation of set-top boxes, the type of boxes that I've, I've been waiting years for. When you bring an app like mine into a, a platform like that, I think you can create some really compelling experiences. We love the Red Zone channel. I remember uh, flying cross country one Sunday on JetBlue and the Red Zone channel made the trip feel like it was an hour long and it was the, the best trip I've ever taken. Imagine getting to the point where you have a Red Zone channel for every sporting event on TV. Being able to bounce from great game to great game, from buzzer beater to, to overtime thriller. I think there's a lot of innovation that can be done in the living room. So, so how deep do you go into the sports? Do you go all the way like ESPN 8, the Ocho? We cover it all. Everything. So if, Little League, if, it's, if there's some fans around there willing to curate the data, you got it. We got it all. If you give me a feed, I will give you an algorithm for it. Anything from NASCAR to minor league hockey to minor league arena football, which until a couple years ago I didn't realize even existed. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome. All right, well, I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Uh, you can go check it out at uh, are you watching uh, this com. That's right. Now, yep, there you go. So go check it out. Really cool stuff here at South by Southwest. We'll come at you more with. Uh, we'll come at you. See if I can close this out and buy a vowel. Come at you with some more interviews coming up next. Don't go away.